so I'm going to make a couple of assumptions first. And the first one is that you have a copy of Expression Engine. So that's important to, uh, to know. Uh, if you don't have a copy of Expression Engine, you can go ahead and get it from lslab.com slash expression engine. Click on buy now. And you will go to the product listing where you can either buy a copy of Expression Engine 2.8.1, which is the current version that is as of this video recording, but this will be the case for any future versions as well. Or if you scroll down, you can download a copy of Expression Engine Core, which is free, which does have some limitations to it in terms of functionality. However, for installing, it will be just about the same. So that's the first thing is to make sure that you have a copy of Expression Engine. And then you want to make sure that your server, wherever you're installing it, is going to meet the system requirements. So it's very important that you meet the requirements because it's going to save you and potentially your web host some head banging on the desk if things don't work. So let's quickly run through some of the high level requirements for Expression Engine. And you may want to review the requirements in the user guide to make sure that you have all of the details as well. And perhaps even send a copy of these requirements to your web host or your IT administrator so they also know how, uh, how the server needs to be set up. The first requirement is PHP 5.2.4 or newer. And you want to make sure that is compiled with the GD or GD2 library. You also want to make sure that you are running MySQL 5.0.3 or newer and have 32 megabytes of memory allocated to PHP at a minimum. And you might want more depending on the complexity of your site. And you want to make sure you have plenty of disk space and also plenty of database space too. They recommend 10 megs of disk space uh, and two megs of database space. I can tell you that for disk space, you'll want definitely more than that, uh, especially if you're gonna have your client or yourself, whoever is managing the site, uploading assets. So you wanna make sure that you allow plenty of space for that. I wouldn't go super cheap on the hosting plan for this. Uh, get yourself a solid host and uh, let me know, email me if you want some recommendations on hosting. So Expression Engine also gives you a server compatibility wizard. And this is simply a little uh, bit of software that you download from the Ellis Lab uh, website from the documentation. And you can upload it to your server well, where you will be installing Expression Engine and test your server for compatibility. So this is what it looks like. We just are here uh, on the server where we'll be installing Expression Engine. And I just put in the MySQL server address, the username, the password, and the name of my database. And uh, then I can just check my server. And there we go. It checks for my PHP version, checks for MySQL support, make sure I have enough memory allocated, and then it has some suggestions here for uh, GD libraries and CAPTCHAs and spell checking and all that stuff. I got yeses on all of those. Uh, you want to make sure you have yeses on at least the first three. Um, otherwise, you will have problems installing Expression Engine. But really, um, my, my suggestion would be to make sure that you get uh, yeses down the support column from top to bottom. And that way, you make sure that you are 100% supported and things should install nice and easily. So let's talk about how to get the files up on the server. The first thing that we want to do is uh, on the left here, I have my desktop on my computer and on the right here, uh, this is acting as my server. I am using a FTP program here called Transmit, which allowed me to uh, move the files between my computer and my server. And here's the EE wizard that I we're just looking at. We can go ahead and get rid of that. So here is Expression Engine 2. Let's open that up. And inside we have an admin file, some images, an index file, system directory, which is all of your uh, Expression Engine application files, and then a themes directory, which holds some uh, things like styles and JavaScript and images. And so we're going to take all of these because this is together Expression Engine and just drag them over onto our server and upload them. And once they are all uploaded, 
then we have a couple more things that we need to do. Uh, the first thing and a very important piece is set the proper file permissions. So I'm running on Apache here. And so I need to make sure that I set uh, some important things, file permissions here. I want to make sure that I set the config file and the database.php file to 666 permissions in Apache. And then a list of other directories that Expression Engine needs to write to. We want to set those directories to 777, things like the cache directory, uploads directory for avatars, captures directory, uh, members photos directory, some uh, private message attachments directory, signature attachments directory, and the uploads directory. So I'll show you here how to do this in, uh, in transmit. If we go into system expression engine and config. You can see I have this config.php. And if I do a get info on that, I can set my permissions here to 666 and then hit apply. And I can do the same thing to my database.php file and then hit apply. And now I just have set those permissions. Of course, you could do this from the command line um, or whatever FTP program that you have. If you are on a IIS server, uh, you want to make sure you provide uh, permissions to the IIS user for all of those same directories. So I'm going to go ahead and set the permissions on these here. So I'm going to go back into uh, Channel University System Expression Engine in my cache directory. It needs to be set to 777. And then my uploads directory, which is going to be uh, right here. It's going to be here in images, my uploads directory. We have avatars, needs to be set to 777. And captures. Member photos. PM attachments. Signature attachments. And then uploads. All right, so now we have all of our permissions set and we are ready for the next step in the installation process. Okay, so back in the browser uh, where we were running the wizard, going to remove this here and I'm running at the domain right now of channeluniversity.dev. And with your domain, you wanna go to your domain and then admin.php. And this will point us to the installation wizard for Expression Engine. So this is how we uh, do uh, Expression Engine installations, but also updates as well. So in the future, if we have to update to a new version of Expression Engine, we'd be using a wizard just like this. So Expression Engine did some tests here and said that uh, everything looks good and that we have a brand new in installation. It recognizes that we don't have anything installed yet. And so we are ready to install a brand new copy agree to the license agreement. And now we need to put in our information. If we have an expression engine license number, we'll want to put that in uh, or we can put it in later. Uh, server settings. This will be our name of our index.php, which we can leave the same. The URL to the directory where the index page is located. And uh, this is correct here because it is in our site root the URL to our control panel file, which is admin.php, the email address of the webmaster, which I guess in this case would be me, and then some database settings. We have our database server address, which is localhost in this case, and our username is root. 
and then our password and the database name. So you need to have all this information handy for your installation. So make sure you have that written down ahead of time. For the SQL database prefix, uh, we want to use the exp prefix unless you are adding to an existing database uh, where there will be a prefix conflict. I would suggest leaving this at exp. And what this means is that all of your database tables will have the exp underscore prefix. And that way, if you have to serve more than one application from a single database, you can do that without conflicts. So now we can create our admin account. In this case, I'll just do it as admin. Put in a password. And our email address and our screen name, which we'll do administrator. And then the name of our site. And, this, and that's the site we'll be building. And now we have the option to install a site theme. So the site theme uh, starts is a uh, agile records site, which is a, a fiction, fictional record company that uh, installs some pre-made uh, data for you, which is kind of fun. Um, we're actually going to leave it to an empty installation right now, and we'll start completely empty. And we have some optional modules here that we can install. Uh, we're going to install the pages module and the file module and the search and query. And I think that's probably it. And then our time zone, uh, it detects that is going to be the United States, Chicago. Just use the time zone that makes sense for you. All right, so with everything filled out, we are ready to install Expression Engine. Let's click the button. All right, Expression Engine has been successfully installed, and we get an important message here saying that uh, if we don't remove this folder called Installer, uh, it's not going to let us in log into the control panel. It's going to keep pointing us back to this page. So let's go into our FTP program here and go into System, and then Installer right here. And let's remove that. There we go. So now that's removed. And if we go here to admin.php, you see we get presented with the login screen. And if I log in with my username and password, here we go. Here is the dashboard for the Expression Engine control panel. So we're all set. Everything is installed and working. And we are good to go. Now that we have Expression Engine installed, I want to do one small thing just to make things just a little bit more secure with our installation. So you can see that if you know that a site is running Expression Engine, you can go to like uh, slash admin.php and get to the control panel login. You can also go to slash system and get to the control panel login too. So I want to obscure this just a little bit so that doesn't happen. So let me go into our FTP program here and go to uh, the admin file here and we have the index.php file. The first thing I want to do is rename this system directory to something else. So we're going to call it unimin. Uh, and the reason I'm calling that is because I'm building uh, the channel university site and it's the admin site. Uh, it's the admin login, so we'll call it uni for university and min for admin. So we'll call it unimin. And we need to let these other two files, admin.php and index.php, know about that change. So we're going to open these up in our text editor. And here for system path, I'm just going to change this name to unimin. Okay. And then uh, go back here and go to admin.php and do the same thing. All right, now I can actually change this name here too. If I wanted to, I could say this is Unimin, like that. And now if I go to my browser and do Unimin.php, you can see I'm brought to this here. And then I can log in just like normal.
you can see I got a notice from Expression Engine that a core file has been changed. And this is a security notice to make sure that I know that one of these files has been changed. Uh, just to verify it was me, can accept that change. And now we're up and running uh, just a slightly more secure than we were before. If you look in the Expression Engine documentation and go to the post installation best practices, there's a couple other options here that you can do, including moving the system directory above the web root.